Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today we're going to be talking about a new feature for Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom called Enhanced Details. We're going to talk about what it does, how to use it, and what images to use it on, and how it compares to one of my most popular tools, the Zone System Express. So what are we talking about today? Well, Adobe recently added a new feature to both Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom called Enhanced Details. I've been asked by several people because my Zone System Express has something in there called Enhanced Contrast if there is a similarity or a difference between the two. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on this Enhanced Detail thing, hop into Photoshop, show you some examples, and then at the end of this, I'll wrap it up and show you the difference between the Enhanced Contrast buttons in the Zone System Express and the Enhanced Details in Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom. They are completely different things, but I need to answer those questions for you. So first things first, what is this enhanced details thing? Well, directly from Adobe's website, it says this, and I quote, you can now enhance fine details in your raw images, particularly bare and X-trans raw mosaic files with enhanced details. By using enhanced details, you get higher resolution, more accurate rendition of fine details, better preservation of small colors, and reduced moire patterns and false colors. Enhanced details is especially useful for making large prints where fine details are more visible. This feature applies to raw mosaic files from cameras with bare sensors, Canon, Nikon, Sony, and others and Fujifilm X-Trans sensors. So basically this does affect quite a few of your Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji files. Now these raw files that come out of these cameras are already phenomenal. What you're looking at in front of you is a raw file from Zion National Park. I've already done the enhanced uh, details feature so that I can just jump into Photoshop because it does take quite a bit of time in order for this to work. So what they're basically saying is that this enhanced details thing can give you more resolution in your images. That's what a lot of people are kind of spreading around the internet, especially that's what I hear. And then people ask me, what do you think, Blake? Well, you know, honestly, I, I don't think it's really doing much of anything, but um, I could be wrong. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you all the things that I'm wrong about. <laughs> so basically how this works, if you want to get to this enhanced details feature, you're going to come to your raw file that you have. You're going to click on the hamburger icon up here in the film strip. If you're in Adobe Camera Raw, if you're in Lightroom, I can't speak to that at this point. You're going to click on that hamburger icon and down here you're going to see enhanced details. A little window is going to pop up and say enhanced details uses machine learning to improve details and reduce artifacts in most raw files. That's the key word in most raw files. The whole internet is kind of up in arms about this new feature. Oh, it's so great. It's so great. And I hate to be a killjoy, but it says specifically right here in most raw files, the enhanced result will be saved to a new DNG image. Now, if you see this right here, it says this feature is computationally intensive and performs best with a fast GPU. So what I'm seeing here is that with the Sony a7R3 raw file, this is going to take about 15 seconds to create. However, based on your GPU, this could take upwards to 45 seconds to maybe even a minute, depending on the GPU that you're running. So if I were to go to press enhance, basically what it's going to do is it's going to create this enhanced DNG. So if you're in Adobe Camera Roll or Lightroom and you're trying to see the difference between the two of these, it's going to be practically impossible for you to see any difference. So what I've done is I've already kind of set this up like a cooking show. I'm going to go ahead and close down my bridge here. And then over here, you're going to see that I've used a series of images, three different images to try and show you where this enhanced details thing is going to be most impressive. Okay. So on this Zion shot on the top, you'll see, I have the enhanced file and on the bottom, you're going to see, I have just the regular background or raw file. So I'm going to zoom into an area that I think might have enhanced details. So if I zoom in really close, let's get just backed out of the pixel level. So right there, we'll turn enhanced off. This is the enhanced version. This is the non-enhanced version, enhanced version non-enhanced version. You're thinking, well, nothing is really happening. I can see a slight difference in very minute details. Let's go down to these leaves and somewhere in here, especially this leaf right here, just outside of the pixel level. We'll turn the enhanced on, turn the enhanced off. You can see right there in that colorful leaf, especially where one color transitions to another color that that enhanced is helping. It's helping a slight bit. Now here's the drawback of this though. I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, file folder for you here. If we were to show this file folder and open this up and look at the details here, this raw file is a 41.4 megabyte file. If I looked at the enhanced version, the enhanced version, the DNG is 173 megabytes. So if you're just doing quick math, that thing is four times close to four times the size of this regular raw file. So keep that in mind that you're going to have a huge jump and a huge increase in your file size. If you use this enhanced details on this image, it, it doesn't necessarily do much. 
if you read what it said, it said most raw files. This is one of those images where it's not really helping much. However, I have two other photographs where this does show that this enhanced details can actually be pretty good in transitions of color specifically and fine details. So let's turn the enhanced off. I'm gonna zoom in back here, right back up here. I think this is a really good example area on this building just outside of the pixel level. So back off a little bit. This is the non-enhanced version. I want you to look at these little peaks of where these lights would, would have a separation if they weren't blown out. But look at the enhanced version. You see how there's a nice refined detailed edge around them. That's actually really good. Another place that you can see this is if we go to the window panes, hopefully nobody's doing something they shouldn't be doing in these windows. Uh, we're gonna go to this window pane and look right here. I'm gonna turn the enhanced version on. This is the non-enhanced. This is the enhanced. So you can see there's there's some color uh, that's happening here that's not very nice. And actually what it says in Adobe's literature on this is it says you get a higher resolution, more accurate rendition of fine details and better preservation of small colors. This is that area where you're gonna see that small colors taking effect right in here. This is the non-enhanced version, enhanced version. You'll see that it doesn't have that kind of color that's going on right there on the edge of that window pane. The transition of a high, uh, a very high contrast to low contrast, the colors definitely come out better. And we can actually do, don't see quite as much artifacting happening around very small details there with that enhanced version on. Another place where you're gonna see that this is particularly helpful is gonna be in lights like this. So if I look at this light right here and I turn this enhanced off, I turn it on, Look at that. that, that light actually looks a lot better because of that color rendition that I have with the enhanced version versus the typical raw file version. I'm gonna back out a little bit here and let's go ahead and zoom in on these lights back here. You might see it even a little bit better and we'll go ahead and turn this off. That's the enhanced off, that's the enhanced on much smoother uh, around the edges of lights and definitely some more smooth uh, transition between details. Now, as far as does it help with noise reduction? Well, if we look at this Milky Way image right here, I'm gonna zoom in on these stars back here. Where, where are those stars, right? Let's just zoom in right back here, okay? So here's the enhanced version. Here's the non-enhanced version. So in the non-enhanced version, if we look at the, just at the pixel level here, right at that pixel level, this is the, the background image, the regular raw file. This is the enhanced raw file. The noise that's happening here is much easier. It's less pixelated. One of my biggest problems with these Sony files is that the noise is very sharp. It's actually something that I missed about my Canon RAW files because the noise wasn't very sharp in those Canon RAW files. But the noise on, on these Sony cameras tends to be very sharp. That's the only way I, I know how to kind of describe it is I can very clearly see where noise is happening on those Sony RAW images. And maybe that's just me. It was just something I've noticed or something like that. I don't know. So I'll zoom out here and I'll zoom back in maybe back here into these stars back here. I know my exposure was a little bit off on this Milky Way shot. But this is the, the enhanced version. This is the non-enhanced version. So where would I use this? So if I've got a great photo of a Milky Way or uh, a, a cityscape scene at night uh, where I know that the colors are going to have some difficulties, this would be a very viable option to run on that image before I start my major processing in Photoshop. I, you can definitely process in, in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw first, then press enhance details. It will save those settings in the DNG file after it creates it. Then I could come in here and I could work on that stuff. So like Adobe says, it's good for most raw files, not all raw files. So with this raw file right here, are you seeing much of a difference in any of the details? Not necessarily because this is a, it, it was shot at one of the most opportune times to photograph something. So before I move on to what I'm gonna show you with the, the Zone System Express and the enhanced contrast, uh, if you like this, please subscribe and hit the little bell so that you can get notified when I create new tutorials like this. I like to take a deep in-depth look at things in Photoshop and display them to you through my experiments that I've done uh, so that you don't necessarily have to do those experiments. And if you like it, you know, like the video, comment on it and share, okay? So I'm gonna move on to the Zone System Express now. This is the panel that I've created for Photoshop that it's basically a workflow panel. It's not to be confused with uh, a lot of your luminosity masking panels. This is actually a workflow system is how I like to, to uh, talk about it. Not necessarily as a panel that has tools in it, but a system that allows you to develop a workflow. So towards the end of that workflow in here, I've got something in effects called Enhanced Contrast and Enhanced Contrast 2. Now, the one in Adobe is called Enhanced Details. Now, mine also does enhance details, but it does it through fine and micro contrast. So this one, Enhanced Contrast 2, is actually more about details than it is about contrast, but I didn't have a clever name for it, so I just called it the big brother of Enhanced Contrast, Enhanced Contrast 2. So when I press this, I'm not going to tell you all the stuff that's going on here. 
It is a form of a high pass sharpen, but it is not exactly a high pass sharpen. There's a lot of things happening under the hood with this enhanced contrast that make this a very invaluable tool. It's not a regular high pass. At first, it's gonna be very powerful and actually really disgusting. You can see the halos that it's making here. That's why I tell you to make this between 0.5 and two pixels. And you also wanna use this enhanced contrast in a very delicate and subtle way. So when I press okay on here, what it's gonna say here is that you've got a mask, it's set to, your brush is set to black already so you can paint some stuff away. And it's a good idea to do that because we don't want this to be taking effect all over the place. But it also says that you can adjust opacity and you can adjust fill and you can also also play with blend if with this one. So if I look at the before and after on this, I've got a lot of crazy detail happening back there. Look, this actually looks like it's out of focus. But when I turn enhanced contrast two on look at that, it's beautiful. However, it is very heavy handed even at 0.5 pixels. So if I press the no darks button right here, it's going to make it so that this sharpened layer essentially, that's what it is, is not affecting any dark areas in my photograph to create noise in dark areas. So now if I press command or control I on this mask and zoom out a little bit, I can use my brush tool and have that set to white. So I'll, I'll press the uh, X button to switch back over. I can start painting in back here on this mountain and start recovering those details. So as I said before, this effect might be very heavy. It was set to 0.5 pixels, but this is controlled by fill because it's using the linear light blend mode. So if I look in the linear light blend mode here and I drop the fill, down a little bit to about right here. I've got some really nice fine tuned details on the back of that mountain that almost makes it look like it's more in focus. So now an area that might be actually in focus, which would be these trees. If I start to brush this in on here, you're just going to see that there's a lot of detail that's being resurrected on that uh, tree branch there. So for those who have asked is, is the enhanced details in Adobe camera Raw and Lightroom the same as the enhanced contrast in my panel? No, it's very different. The enhanced contrast two in here actually uh, goes in, grabs those details, forces them out in front of you. If we were to zoom in back here and look at these rocks, this would be a good place to show this. If I start painting on here, make my brush a little bit smaller and paint on here, look at how those rocks go from being kind of fuzzy to now actually having some fine detail around them. So these are two very different things. What I'm doing here with the Zone Sim Express panel is actually physically uh, altering the uh, sharpness of the photo through something similar to a high pass, but there's a lot going on under the hood that I'm not going to tell you because it's my secret sauce. Okay. Uh, but then if you look at what, what's happening with the enhanced details that you'd see in Adobe camera Raw or Lightroom, it's actually using an algorithm to help with those fine colors. So is there a place for both of them? Absolutely. They're just different. Uh, I don't see this enhanced details thing being something I'm going to use on every one of my photographs, but if I'm shooting the Milky Way at night, you better believe I'm going to use this. If I can get better quality out of my noise there to make that image look better after I'm done. Yes, I'm going to use it. Okay. So it's not about which one's better than the other. That's not what this video is about at all. This video is just to compare the two and look at things from an analytical perspective on what the enhanced details is doing versus what enhanced contrast in the zone system express is doing. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment on it, share it and tell a friend and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I love doing these tutorials. I try to do them every single Friday if I can, uh, but you know, I've got three kids and a wife and a life and things get in the way. So I do what I can when I can. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Thank you very much.